Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win, but you find a way to lose. Um, look, Conor Ben. Conor Ben is a monster. I'm telling you right now, he is in a horrible position because he's that intimidating of a fight, fighter, and the way uh, that he knocks guys out and his aggressive style has other welterweight fighters not wanting to fight him. And it's very unfortunate. Eddie Hearn went on record and said that the domestic fights he was trying to make between Khan and Kell Brook, uh, those, those fights are unrealistic. Khan, they're not sure if he's going to continue fighting or not, but if Khan chooses a fight, he's definitely not looking to get in there with a lion like uh, Khan of Ben. Khan's going to look for something probably a more softer touch, but if he does get in with Khan of Ben, because we know Khan's not afraid of anyone, he's going to want a whole lot of money. So that's the deal with Amir Khan. Plus, we're not even sure if he's going to continue fighting. I think he should stop myself. But if he does continue, he might as well get in there with an elite fighter just to see if he still has it, see what he feels. Maybe the fluke, the uh, Kell Brook fight was a fluke because he said he had a bad training camp and a lot of injuries. That's, those were Amir Khan's words. So Amir Khan would not be an option for Conor Ben. Kell Brook. Could be an option, but Kell Brook refuses to fight Conor Ben. Kell Brook wants 10 million pounds, which is more than twice the amount of money he made for Amir Khan. 10 million pounds is what he wants. And that's just not a realistic figure. Eddie Hearn already kind of laughed that off and said it is so ridiculous that these guys don't want to fight Conor Ben at, you know, 147 pounds, even, you know, catch weight of 150, that, you know, he would... He would out out um, outprice himself by saying he wants ten million knowing that they would never meet that demand. Uh, the other thing is Kell Brook doesn't even fight. Um, he, he's a welterweight. He he can fight at one fifty four, but he's going on to fight uh, Chris Eubank Jr., who fights at one sixty, who can fight at one sixty eight, and they they're meeting Chris Eubank Jr. is meeting Kell Brook at one hundred and fifty eight pounds. And the thing is, if Kell Brook was to fight um, Conor Ben, the weight would be more around what Kell Brook normally fights at. And what would give him, you would think, more of an advantage because he doesn't have to go up so high in weight. But he ref he doesn't want to fight Conor Ben, so he feels the easier fight is Chris Eubank Jr., so he's willing to risk being at a disadvantage by going up in weight. So instead of fighting at a catch weight, because welterweight should be at 147, but catch weight at 150 because it's hard for Kelbrook to get to 147. He'd rather go ahead and just meet Eubank Jr. at a catch weight of 158. He should be stronger and be easier to make the weight, but he's fighting a much bigger a bit, much bigger opponent. So that's the story with Kelbrook. All right, so we know what Conor Ben, no Kelbrook, no Amir Khan. So now Eddie Hearn's looking to get him back in the summer because he just clipped Van Herden in two rounds. Uh, Conor Ben didn't take any damage, so he could actually fight next week if he wanted. But he's looking to get back in the ring as soon as June, July. They were looking at, what's his name? Uh, Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner and Eddie Hearn have been back and forth texting each other. Uh, Adrian Broner told Eddie Hearn the price he wants. Eddie Hearn let Broner know, this is what I can offer you. Adrian Broner's like, no, let me talk to Al Heyman. He comes back a few days later and said, okay, what other offer do you have for me? Eddie Hearn laughed at him. So Adrian Broner has hurt himself. Because he can't get a fight. Nobody wants to pay him big money anymore. Uh, he's still a draw. He still has a name. But Adrian Broner's just looking to get a whole lot of money for an easy fight. And I'm going to tell you right now, Adrian Broner fighting Conor Ben is not an easy fight for Broner. Broner's going to have a tough time, especially in those early rounds, because Conor Ben comes out like a madman. You know what would be a dream fight? would be Conor Ben and Isaac Cruz, but there's too much of a disparity in weight. Isaac Pitbull, Pitbull Cruz and Conor Ben would be a hell of a match, but it's just not going to happen. But back to Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner doesn't have many options. Eddie Hearn realizes that. That's why Eddie Hearn's going to lowball him and try to squeeze him for the least amount of money possible because Adrian Broner will be a huge name on the resume of Conor Ben, and Conor Ben is Eddie Hearn's guy. Eddie Hearn speaks highly of Adrian Broner, says he likes him. But Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Hearn even said in the interview, let him play the game. He's all about playing the game, getting the most money for the least amount of risk. And if you say, okay, 
No, Hood, how, how do you figure that? How do you arrive at that conclusion? I'm going to tell you. Eddie Hearn said it. We talk about a Mantis Stanley Unis. He just won the w, WBA regular welterweight championship. And Eddie Hearn's like, that belt means nothing. Why wouldn't work in the world when he put Conor Ben in that tough of a fight against somebody who's not known just for a WBA regular, regular welterweight belt? I mean, that means nothing. He would rather put him in with somebody who's well known, like an Adrian Broner, all those in the belt on the line, but he can make a few million dollars. Or just go ahead and figure out a way to get him in the ring with Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford to make a few million, but again, but in it for real titles. He's not worried about a regular a regular championship at welterweight. He feels that's a waste of time. But with a Manchester Stan Unis, and I, and, I, and, I, and I love it, real recognizes real. People know Stan Unis is the real deal. He's going to have a tough time getting fights because they're going to say the belt means nothing. And all, what it is is they know the risk they take getting in there with him. Stan Unis fights from the first round to the 12th round. He's sharp. He's tight. He's a... Um, uh, um, Highly skillful, very disciplined, and he is a sharpshooter. You get in there with him, you got to kill him. The thing is, Stan Yunus can get hit. He fights a guy like Conor Ben, Conor Ben can get hit too. It's just a matter of who lands first and lands the hardest shot. Uh, Stan Yunus has proven his chin to be like Brandon. Conor Ben has a good chin too. But if they were to fight, that would just be a very explosive matchup. Not sure who would win, but I got my money on Stan Yunus because I just like him. I like him. Guy comes in there, he's not a dirty fighter. Uh, he needs to work on keeping his head up because when he ducks down, a guy like Conor Ben, who's a pit bull, he's not going to care. If you go down, you duck down, he's going to hit you, he's going to put his weight on you, he may throw you across the ring. Conor Ben doesn't care. He's vicious, he's in there to hurt you, he's in there to win. But a, fight, a guy like Stan Yunus won't get that fight. Um, so what they're looking at with, uh, with Conor Ben, as far as Eddie Hearn, he doesn't want to put him in with a Jaron Ennis because not many people know who Jaron Ennis is. Jaron Ennis is still building his profile. And Jaron Ennis is an extremely difficult fight because Conor Ben's not going to be able to just walk him down and land shots. He's not going to be able to do it. Jaron Ennis is a master boxer puncher. He's a master boxer and he's a hits hard. So when you get in the ring with someone like that who can move around and do things like Floyd Mayweather but knock you up with one shot, it's extremely high risk. Again, he needs to raise his profile, Jerron Ennis, before he starts getting those fights, which he's doing so. So then when you start taking a look at, well, what are the options for Conor Ben? Okay, we get it. Conor Ben is a great fighter, hungry fighter. He hits hard. A lot of people don't want to fight him because of what he brings to the table and the fact that he risks taking an L. And on the, uh, conversely, when it comes to Eddie Hearn, he doesn't want to put Con Conor Ben in with killers because, one, he may not be able to make, the, make a few million, two, he risks uh, uh, losing... One of his show ponies, because Conor Ben could definitely lose fighting a, a Mantis Stan Yunus. Um, getting there with Terrence Crawford. He can definitely lose fighting Crawford, who's a WBO champ, welterweight champion. You put him in there with Earl Spence. He's the IBF, WBA, and WBC champion. Those are the real belts. But would he get that shot? Highly unlikely. Uh, for Conor Ben coming back, a good fight would be against your Danish Yugas. Yugas will fight anybody. There's big money in that fight. That's a good option for Conor Ben. Not in his next fight because Yuka is going to take probably a year off to heal up. But that would be a good fight, but not, not next. Uh, Jerron Ennis, they're not going to put him in there with a killer like that because they say Jerron Ennis doesn't have the profile necessary to generate the money that he feels that uh, Conor Ben deserves. Then there's Virgil Ortiz. That would be a good fight. But Virgil Ortiz is trying to get one of the bigger fights with Crawford and Spence. But Virgil Ortiz is not going to get it because he's killing himself to get down to 147. Virgil Ortiz really needs to be fighting probably a goddamn heavyweight. I mean, the man died over there, damn near dead, killed himself trying to get to 147. That's ridiculous. I, I hope Virgil Ortiz, man, uh, I wish him a speedy recovery, but he got to figure it out. But Virgil Ortiz is 18 and 0 with 18 knockouts. So you know what he brings to the table. That guy is a welterweight Isaac Pitbull Cruz. That's who you want to see him fight. So... Conor Ben and Ortiz would be good. I just think Ortiz, for his help, needs to go up to 154. So that probably won't happen. Then you got Stan Yunus we talked about. But there's somebody in between on that. It's not Danny Garcia. You know, it's Keith Thurman. Let me tell you, Keith Thurman has options. Keith Thurman can fight Conor Ben. Keith Thurman can fight Earl Spence. Keith Thurman can fight Terrence Crawford. 
because I think Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence they're not going to be eye to eye on the first split. And Keith Thurman going to pick up the fight with with either Conor Ben, Terrence Crawford, or he's going to pick it up with Earl Spence. If not, Keith Thurman has a good chance of fighting Stan Uvis. If he doesn't fight him, he could fight Jerron Ennis, but I doubt he'll fight Jerron Ennis because there's not much money there. Uh, Keith Thurman could petition to fight Tank Davis He's because he, supposedly his name was thrown out there. But I think realistically, the fight for Conor Ben will probably be Keith Thurman because Keith Thurman is a big name. Keith Thurman can sell pay-per-views over in England. He, know, he was a unified welterweight champion. That's the kind of name Conor Ben wants on his resume. Keith Thurman's not going to stand in front of him. Keith Thurman's a boxer puncher. This is a good fight for Keith Thurman to beat one of these up-and-coming welterweights who are hungry. I just uh, think that that's a, still a risky fight for, for Thurman, but it's an even riskier fight for Conor Ben because Thurman, he's not over the hill yet. And uh, Thurman is a boxer puncher. He can move. He'll slip shots. It's hard to hit him, and he will make you pay. And I think Con I think Eddie Hearn knows that too, not to just throw him in there with Thurman, although Thurman has been off for a while and has been inconsistent. But Thurman is still dangerous. We talked about Stan Yunus. He's just not going to – everyone's going to run from him. Uh, that's just – those are just facts. Nobody wants to fight him. And then after that, you have Radzis Butiev, who just fought Stan Yunus and lost. In a, it, it was a competitive matchup, but he, he lost. But um, that's a good matchup for Conor Ben and then David Avancian. But the problem is, Butiev is not really known. Avancian is not really known. Stan Yunus is a, is a hell of a fighter, but he's not really known yet. He's getting there. Keith Thurman is well known. That's what Aaron's looking for. Someone who's well known where he can generate a lot of, a lot of sales. Keith Thurman is an option. Virgil Ortiz, still not really known. Struggling with health and weight issues, not an option. So Keith Thurman so far. Jerron Ennis, not very well known. Great fighter, very high risk. Probably won't get the fight like that. Udenis Ugas, excellent option, but he's damaged from fighting Earl Spence. Who knows what's going to happen with him. So when you take a look at it, there's only one real choice. And that's uh, Keith Thurman. The other choice is Adrian Broner. But he wants too much money. And these guys are glad to fight Adrian Broder. But that will be a cherry pick because Adrian Broder hasn't fought in a while. He has a lot of weight to lose. And, you know, it just if he goes and beats Adrian Broder, he gets the name. But that that should, that would give him a false sense of security. Like, he shouldn't go beat your chest after beating Adrian Broder. Like, that's, right now, Adrian Broder, man, is he, he's no longer the athletic bastard. You know what I'm saying? He, he needs to, to really get back into boxing. Quit worrying about the 10 or $15 million paydays. It's over. You got to take one, one million, seven hundred fifty thousand. Win that fight, Adrian Broder, come back, up your profile. Then you can start looking back at the $2 million pay. Uh, but you got to perform. You got to knock people out. Come back, look for your $2 million fight. But by your third fight, you're back in that 5 to $10 million because people are going to buy back into the hype. But he's got to be careful with a guy like Conor Ben, who is just relentless, hits hard, and is very uh, menacing. He just doesn't care. That's why I don't think he's going to get that um, uh, Adrian Broner fight, because Adrian Broner, he knows him going in there with him, with uh, Conor Ben, is uh, extremely high risk. Even for Adrian Broner to fight Keith Thurman, he's not going to do that. Adrian Broner against any of these guys is a problem. Adrian Broner is looking for a guy with no real name, where he can make a few million dollars and get in there and get to the finish line and win a decision. He's not taking the risk like necessary. And for him to come in and take a risk to knock Conor Ben out, I mean, he's going to make, make himself susceptible to being clipped and clipped hard. And that's what we don't want. So when you really look at what's out there for the welterweight landscape, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of tough, man. You know, it, it really is. So I think the only viable option is Keith Thurman. And they want to bring him to the States. Keith Thurman is the name to put him against. He beat Granados. He beat um, the other guy with the, 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 the nutritionist, man, uh, Al Jerry. And he just clipped Van Herden. And Van Herden fought Earl Spence. And uh, they actually went to deep waters with Earl Spence. Um, Van Herden... He fought somebody else, but the fight was stopped on cuts. He got cut in the first round. I think it was Stan Yunus he fought. Oh, no, Ennis. It was Jerron Ennis, but it, it stopped on a cut. So Van Herden is no pushover. He can fight, uh, but he just, 
he, you know, he's going through a lot. He lost his father, so, you know, I'm not making an excuse. I think Conor Ben has the goods. I think Conor Ben is going to make a lot of noise. But realistically, his next fight is probably going to be Keith Thurman because there's nothing else out there, to be honest with you. That being said, let me know your, your, your opinion on Conor Ben. What should he do next? Got them hair in my mouth. Eddie Hearn is uh, all about playing the game, looking to get the biggest name with the least amount of risk, which is Adrian Broner, where they can make the most amount of money. But Adrian Broner, you got to pay him. Adrian Broner knows there's money over there. If you want me to come over, pay me, just like you paid Charles Martin when he fought AJ. But Charles Martin had a belt. Adrian Broner has nothing but a name. But if you want my name on your resume, pay me for it. My name, the value of my name is just as much as my, my name value, my, my name holds as much value as the, the belt that Charles Martin had when he fought AJ. Paid Charles Martin like eight or 10 million. They knew they were gonna clip him, they clipped him, got the belt, they went on with making 20, 20, 40, 50 million dollars a fight. Adrian Broner's like, you know what, if you're gonna clip me, pay me 10 million. And Adrian Broner, I think he doesn't even care if he wins. I just think he wants the money. Uh, I honestly do, but it is what it is. Leave your two cents below, let me know your opinion. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If not, I just appreciate you taking time to look at it. Shout out to all the veterans, and as always, I'm in the breeze.